Hey everybody, it's been a very long time since I've filmed a video, but I have taken a full-time teaching job, which takes most of my time. So anyhow, this video has been a long time coming. I actually filmed it several months ago, and I just got around to editing it today, and it needed an introduction. So this is what we'll be making in this video. This is the mini bus bag from Disorderly Threads. It is an embroidery design and it comes in two different sizes. One fits a five by seven hoop and the other one fits a six by 10 hoop. So hope you enjoy it. So first, here are the supplies you're going to need. All the dimensions are in the PDF that comes with the embroidery file from Disorderly Threads. So I'm not gonna go over those, rather just the actual supplies. So first of all, you are going to need either some low loft batting which would be very thin batting, like uh, cotton would be good, just something very thin. Or you can do what I'm doing and just use some old acrylic felt. This is some from uh, Joann's that is really kind of rough and gross, but it'll make great batting for inside the bag. Also, we have here our, um, our uh, side mirror materials. So we have here, it, um, silver marine vinyl and then for the back I'm using a wool blend gray felt. Right here is the fabric you're going to use for the road along the bottom of the bag. Back here this is the fabric that I'm using for the lower half in the back of the bus bag. In the in the instructions it shows red fabric but of course you can use any color you like so I'm using this really pretty blue. And then for the top half of the bus, I have chosen to use white, which is the same as what's in the instructions. Then you're going to need a nylon zipper that is at least 9 inches long, and it's best to use the same color zipper as the upper half of the bag since that's where the zipper is going to be located. A nylon zipper, this is just the, your standard zipper. Uh, it, it's uh, available at a lot of big box stores. If you're going to use a lot of zippers, you're better off buying them online where it's much cheaper. And then we have our lining fabric. I'm just using something from my stash that coordinates. This is optional, but a piece of ribbon at the top where you can hook the bag onto something. Then we have some clear vinyl. This is available at most uh, fabric and craft stores. You can also use um, like a clear shower curtain liner or that vinyl packaging that comes with a sheet set. So anything like that is fine. So the first step is to make the side mirrors. I have some tearaway stabilizer in the hoop and I have my marine vinyl and then the wool blend felt. You can make the whole thing out of felt if you prefer. So I have my hoop all ready. If your machine requires you to trace a design, make sure you've done that. And then the first step is going to stitch a little box around the perimeter of the design. And this is going to show us where we need to put our fabrics. And there we go. Now if you need to remove the hoop in order to do this, go ahead, but for me I'm able to just slide the backing underneath and put the vinyl over the top. And I'm just using a scrap. And this is going to stitch out our mirror shapes. They're quite small, but they add a really cool detail to the bag. And those are completed. So you can see, here's the back, and here's the front. So you will want to remove the stabilizer and then cut each of these pieces out. And there is some time while the rest of the bag is stitching out 
um, when you can do that. So you can go ahead and hoop your cutaway stabilizer and your hoop that is large enough for the design and start stitching it. So now it's time to stitch our bag. As you can see, I have hooped a piece of cutaway stabilizer. I have not hooped any of the fabric yet because in, in, in the hoop designs, you do what's known as floating the fabric and you'll see that throughout the process. I'll also show you the little side mirrors. You can see those right here. I have them all cut out. You're gonna set those aside because you'll put those on later on in the process. And our first step is going to be attaching the zipper in the hoop. So let's do stitch number one. And you can see here, hopefully, yes, that there are two parallel lines on your stabilizer. That is where you are going to place your zipper. You can see here that I've centered it so that the two ends of the zipper, let me turn a little bit, those two ends are outside of the stitching area because we do not want to stitch over metal that will cause a lot of problems, not the least of which damaging your machine. So um, I'm just using a piece of blue painter's tape and I'm just going to secure this zipper down. There we go. And the next step is, is going to be stitches to sew the zipper onto the stabilizer. Okay, so we have the zipper taped onto the front and if the tape isn't working for you, you can always place some pins. Just make sure they're on the uh, front or top of the hoop so they don't interfere with the operation of your machine. So our next step is to, be, is to take our piece of lining fabric, and this is the uh, medium of the three size pieces that you cut. Now this is a little tricky. We're, we're setting the lining on the hoop a uh, good side or right side down. So you can see it's more vibrant. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. We're going to lay it down over the hoop and we're going to line it up with this lower seam that we stitched. So the lower of the two. Just make sure it's centered on there. And then you can pin or tape it in place. I'm hoping I can do this without poking myself. There we go. And you just ta uh, tape or pin the other side. Okay, and that's what that should look like. Now we are going to turn our hoop back over again. And one thing that I like to do with this lining right here is see how it's kind of flopping around. I don't want it to get caught back here in my stitching. So what I do is I make sure it's all smoothed out on the back and then I pin it to the uh, top of the stabilizer right here. See, all set. All right, so. Now we're working on the front of the hoop. Pardon my fumbling here. I'm trying to do this without having to move the camera around. All right, so on the front of the hoop, we are going to be using our white fabric. Here it is. Now this is a solid and it looks the same on both sides, so it does not matter which way I put it on here. We need that, and then one of our blue pieces, or whatever color you are using. Okay, so we have our white piece, which is the, the top of the bus, and then our 
blue or whatever color you want to use piece for the bottom and we're stacking these with the bottom color on top of the top color let's make sure those are lined up very nicely there we go got these and then we are going to pin or tape these in place basically in the same spot that we did the lining when we had it flipped over. So I'm making sure this is all straight. So we're lining it up with the bottom stitching line there. I'm going to go a little crazy with the pins here. And there we have it. So that was a lot of stuff that we added all in one step, but don't let that intimidate you. So we're returning our hoop to the machine and is going to stitch a line back and forth to secure all of these items. Okay, so that step is completed and next we need to grab our batting or felt and we need to lay it on the lower portion of the hoop. So just like that and we're going to fold down these front fabrics over the top. We're not going to do anything with that lining on the back right now. We're just leaving that right where it is. Alright, so let's pull these fabrics down. And we're going to make sure we pull them nice and tightly. So this is another good opportunity to use your pins. Because we want our result to be nice and smooth and we don't want any wrinkles in our finished bag. Alright. So I'm actually pinning these separately. So I want to make sure that this looks really good. So that is all pinned and now we're going to do the next step which is um, step number three. Okay, so that has given us a line to trim along. So I'm going to remove the pins that are holding the white fabric in place because we are going to trim all of that off that's below this line right here. Now this is going to be covered with a satin stitch afterwards, so it's important that we cut very close to the edge, or close to that stitching rather. We're aiming for an eighth of an inch or even less, just don't cut the stitching itself. And then the fabric along the sides you can just cut straight across. Um, that's not going to be part of your finished bag, so don't worry about it too much. And then you can always go back and trim a little bit if you don't think you got close enough on your first pass. Okay, so the next step is that satin stitching. Okay, the satin stitching is done. As you can see, I didn't get quite close enough, so I'll have to try to clean that up later. But the next step is the placement for the road fabric. Now that we've completed that, we're going to take off these pins that we used to keep the blue fabric down and use it to hold our gray fabric in place. And it doesn't have to be gray, you can use whatever color you want that resembles a road. You could even do green if you want, to, want it to look like your uh, bus is parked on grass. Alright, so we're going to run a tack down stitch. 
So our attack down stitch has been completed and this time we're going to trim above that line and as close as we can. Next step are the tires. Now we're going to be stitching the lights. The first step is the white part, which is the larger portion of the light. And now we're going to stitch the center orange portion of the lights. Now that the lights are done, we're going to be stitching the bumper, the satin stitching around the lights, and the emblem, all in one step. Look at all that beautiful detailing. So that's looking very nice. So we have completed all the detailing on the bottom half of this bag, which means we're going to pull this lining down into its final spot. So let me remove all these pins. All right. And then we're just pulling it down. It was up here, now it's here. And then I am going to pin it at the bottom. So right down here, I'm just going to pull it tight and kind of like what I did at the top, I'm pinning it to the, the stabilizer right here. There we go. Then it stays in the position it's supposed to be in. The directions tell you to put um, the upper fabric on the front first, but I'm actually going to do the back first. I think that's going to be easier. So we need our other piece of lining fabric, the other small one, and we're going to put it right side down. And this time we're lining it up with this upper row, or this upper seam. Right. And then we're gonna pin or tape that into place. And here's what that looks like. Now I'm going to put the front fabric on. And here that is. And then that is going to go right side down if your fabric has a right or wrong side and we're putting in the same position as the lining just on the front of the hoop so we're lining that up with the, the top edge of the zipper and that line of stitching there now we're going to put this back on the hoop and you want to check underneath just to make sure the fabric back there is where it's supposed to be and then you're going to run your next step and this is going to secure the top edges of those fabrics to the zipper. So that step is complete. Next we need to take our piece of batting or felt and lay it right on our hoop in this top area. Line it up with that seam right there. And we're gonna take this front fabric and fold it up and pin it into place so it's nice and taut. Okay, so that's all pinned into place, and we're going to run our next step, which is the placement for the vinyl windows. And again, our lining on the back, we're not touching that or moving that yet. And here are the two placement stitches for the windows. Now we're going to tape our piece of clear vinyl to cover that entire area, and now it's going to stitch the tack down. So our tack down stitch is done and I went ahead and trimmed the excess vinyl away. Remember to get very, very close to that stitching and don't forget to trim the space between the two windows. So the next step is the satin stitching that goes around each of the windows. Look how nice that looks. 
We're going to do a couple things now before we stitch the next step. I need to remove the hoop and we're going to turn it over and this lining piece right here we need to fold it upwards. So I'm going to reach to the front and remove these pins and then we're just folding it up and we're going to have a gap right here that's supposed to be there that's where the zipper is and then we're just folding this over or turning this over and we can use this pin that's holding the white fabric in place and just pin that lining into place And here's what that looks like. Now the next step is extremely important. You need to open your zipper. We're going to open it two thirds of the way over. Try to get this on camera here. Two thirds of the way. Just like that. Now we're going to do a couple other things. I think it's going to be easiest to show if I have my hoop on the machine. There we go. See, there's our zipper. So the other thing we need to do is if we're adding some sort of ribbon loops onto the bag, we need to add those now. So I'm gonna get my piece of ribbon and I'm going to cut it in half. So I got two pieces. And now there are not placement stitches for this ribbon. So what I'm doing is, here is, um, the bag that I previously made, and I use this all the time. It fits my phone perfectly, so I use it on walks. So I don't have to bring my whole purse, and then it doesn't matter if I have pockets. But anyhow, I'm going to use it kind of as a template. So I'm laying it over the top here, and I'm going to take these same pins and mark where I have those two pieces of ribbon sticking out. Now, now chances are you don't have a bag like this, so I will show you where, where these pins ended up. So they are just right above, it was actually too close, so I'm gonna Move it right there. So this is about where the seam line is. Let's get a ruler. So that is about a half an inch away. Let me show you this again. Away from these windows here. So I'm going to put my ribbons right up there. Now you can pin or tape them. So I'm going to pin them right here. And now as always, make sure your pins are well out of the way of where your machine will be stitching. Here's our other little ribbon loop. And these little loops are going to enable us to attach a crossbody strap to this bag to make it into a crossbody bag. And it'll be more useful like that. So, the, and then the last thing we need to do is attach our little mirrors that we added earlier. So, there's no placement stitch for this either. So, we have to follow the directions. And they say that, that the mirror should be placed over the end of the satin stitching of the V. So, right here, they're going to be face down so that after the bag is turned, they're going to be facing outward with the vinyl side forward. So we have our first one right here and we're going to, we're angling the mirror upward slightly and then, oops, I almost did it wrong. It has to be inside the bag. 
anything that's outside of the stitching line is going to be cut off so we want this inside the bag so it stays attached so like this up angled up slightly and that it covers the end of the satin stitching by about a quarter of an inch so it's a little tricky but there's our satin stitching and we're covering it like that a little bit we want to make sure the end is well outside of our seam because we want to get that all caught in the seam I'm gonna see if I can tape this down. Hope it stays, because that's gonna be nearly impossible to pin. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So the the vinyl side down, and angled slightly. Oops, I almost did that again. So it's pointing to the inside of the bag. And there we go. I think this is correct. This is a little bit of a tricky step. Okay. So that is all taped in place. And next, we're going to lay our main fabric, which is right in the instructions, and I'm using blue. So we need to lay this over this whole thing. Make sure you cover the entire project, everything. Then we need our batting, or in my case, felt. And we're going to lay that on top of everything. Make sure we don't shift our, our blue fabric. And that's um, the outer backing fabric. So we lay that down. And then if you have some batting that might get caught on the presser foot of your embroidery machine, you can lay a piece of tearaway stabilizer on top. My machine doesn't have that issue, so I'm going to skip that step. So now we're going to stitch out this portion. And it's going to go all the way around this entire bag. We are almost done. At this point, we're going to take our hoop off the machine and what I did was I peeked behind here and made sure that all the little things I attached were caught in the seams and they were. So we're going to turn over to the back of the machine and this is where we're going to pay, place our main lining fabric. So here it is. We're going to place it right side down and it needs to cover all of this stitching, this outline, the entire area. And then we're going to pin or tape that into place. Okay, so, so here's what that looks like. We're gonna put the hoop, everything all back on the machine. And again, make sure that this lining piece on the back of your hoop has not shifted around or folded over because this is the last step of the embroidery portion of this project. All right, looks good. So now we're gonna run that last step. So we are done with the stitching portion of the project. I have removed it from the hoop, as you can see. And our first step is to cut, cut out along the edge, leave about a quarter of an inch between where you cut and the stitching. And in this section right here, you can see there's a little opening here. We want to leave about a half inch, maybe even a little bit more right there. And I'll show you why later. So let's cut this out. So here's what we have. Now this little piece of felt right here, we don't need this, so you can cut that a quarter of an inch from the edge just like normal all right and now we are going to be turning it in this little opening right here so here's what we have now one thing we need to do is very carefully cut away the stabilizer right here. 
you might want to use a smaller scissors, a very pointy one, to get it started because you want to be very careful to only cut the stabilizer and not the zipper fabric underneath or this fabric alongside of it. So take your time to do that. You don't want to ruin your whole project. So there you go. And then this bottom right here, we're just tucking that seam allowance inside of the bag. And then you can either hand stitch this closed or you can use a fabric glue or a steam -a seam. So you have a few different options there. I am going to do that portion later and then skip ahead to where we turn this all right side out and we get to see how beautiful our bag looks. So poke out those corners. And look at that. You can add a little piece of ribbon or some other type of zipper pull. And then um, you can fix any little, any goof ups that you have. You can see right here, that's gonna be a, a little bit of a chore to remove. And then I got a little jump stitch right here I need to trim. And other than that, it's done. So here's the back. Give it a little bit of a press if you got, got it wrinkled while you were turning. And our little side mirrors turned out nicely. They look good and symmetrical. And then you can see our cool looking lining in there. It's got a nice California vibe to it. So there it is. Um, I will link a video below of uh, how to make a crossbody strap. You can also buy them pre-made. And then this is a really perfect bag just for uh, running errands or um, anytime you need just a little, little bitty bag. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, don't forget to click like on the video, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this with your crafty friends. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.